thank you so much for coming and um, to uh, get to my talk. Am I blocking too much? Right. So it's uh, how to write a sponsored post that doesn't suck. I'm Virginia Dwan, and I originally uh, was supposed to be giving this talk with my friend and co-speaker, Summerlin Davis, uh, but some personal things came up, so she couldn't, couldn't make it. Uh, so, sorry, you're stuck with me, <laughs> or you're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> One or the other. <laughs> so, oh, thanks for coming. Oh, no, 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 I, I've just, just <laughs> introduced myself. I'm Virginia. And so, okay, so here we go. Uh, who do I think I am telling you how to write a sponsored post? Yes, I feel like it takes kind of moxie to tell you what to do. <laughs> Uh, just so you kind of know who I am, I'm Virginia Duan, also known as Mandarin Mama. I, um, I host a podcast called the Nuna Army Podcast, which is very specific to a K-pop boy band called BTS. I, lo I love them a normal amount. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's my story, I'm sticking to it, okay? <laughs> I'm a digital content creator, so that means like, a, I mean, you guys know what that means, but I also manage social media for companies and, and conferences. Um, and I'm a freelance writer, so you might have seen my stuff in like mom.com, Romper, uh, Mochi Magazine, and um, also the entertainment editor for Mochi Magazine, which is the longest running Asian American uh, online magazine for women. And the, our goal is to amplify Asian voices. And also the founder of Brazen Asian, which is the only kind of creative retreat for Asian, Pacific Islander, Desi Americans. So that's kind of my background. Uh, and then the main other thing is that I, I worked with one particular company for like 18 months where I had to write two sponsored posts a week as, long, and, as well as a newsletter for a year and a half. So if you can imagine getting sick of a topic and a, to and a product, mm -hmm. that, that was me by the end. I was like, oh my gosh. So I, I totally empathize with the like how to, how to write something for a sponsored post. And also, because I love BTS, I write about them a lot. And because um, I love them a normal amount. <laughs> so what do I mean by sponsored posts? Like personally, I consider anything that someone pays you to write a sponsored post. So whether it is on your own site or on like, for like a freelance magazine or something like that, I kind of consider that a sponsored post in my brain. Uh, but for the purposes of this talk, We'll narrow it down to a, a post that someone is paying you to write about their product or service on your own site. Now, one of the examples I include is actually for another site, but you know, it's my talk, so yeah. <laughs> I can break the rules. <laughs> but, but in general, yeah, someone's paying you to write about this thing, and um, you have to generate content for that. Uh, it, it will, you can also obviously do it for like Instagram, pictures, videos, YouTube, um, but I'm not very good at those things. <laughs> So it's outside of the scope of this uh, talk. And I also talk really, really, really fast. So if you think I'm talking too fast, just go, and I will try to slow down. So, um, so first we're gonna talk about what makes a sponsored post suck. Um, and we don't have to put anyone on blast. <laughs> you, know? you don't have to say like, well, I read so and so's post and that was terrible. Mm -hmm. uh, but what, kind of, what are kind of the things that you, when you read, you're like, this is a terrible sponsored post. I think if it's very salesy, okay. and it's not really like from their experience of it, it's more like go buy this, go buy this, go buy this, go buy this. Or if it just sounds ingenuine, or it has like nothing to do with the brand or that person yeah. and what they're posting about. Oh, by brand, you mean the. So, like, if they're, a, you know, I don't know, they're like a mom blogger and they're posting about like something at Home Depot, but they don't do mouse projects, so like, I don't get why they're trying to sell this. That's exactly what oh, I was like. Okay. I was like, I work with a lot of influencers and I have to take random product shots of stuff and I'm just like, have you ever used this? And like, no. That's <laughs> <laughs> just annoying. All right, anyone else? Okay. When you can kind of tell that like the talking points from the brand were just kind of copied and pasted in the post. When there's like a first transition, like they're telling a long story and it's like, the product. <laughs> yes, yes. Okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, anyone else? All right, so we're done with the talk now. So <laughs> all my but good job. So yeah, so what makes a sponsored post suck? It's boring, right? Like it just goes, it's like, it's just boring. I don't have to explain boring. The, the, the talk might be boring, you know? But like, you just know it when you see it, right? Um, or it reads like a press release. 
right? Like it just, it's very kind of like, not that press releases are actually really hard to write. My husband was like, you should write press releases. And I was like, maybe I shouldn't, because I'm be bad at it. Um, but you know, you have to cram a lot of information in like a page or two, and it has to be like all the information. And, and sometimes it's like really superlative adjectives, like, it's the most stunning thing. And you're like, this is a dog toy. A dog toy <laughs> doesn't need to be stunning, right? Or maybe, I don't know, but like, so it's like a press release. Um, there's no narrative or point to the post. It's just like, just like word vomit. And everyone's written those, okay? Like I, that, that's like every, like my entire journal from like 1990 to 2007, right? That's word vomit. Um, there's no through line or story. Like there's no, you can't follow. Like I think I think you were saying how like just or you were saying like there's a sudden transition. Like half the story and then boom, there's a product, right? So there's no narrative, uh, no arc to the post. Uh, oh, don't worry, you don't have to like copy every word down. I have at the last slide. Uh, you, I have a link where you can see the slides, and then um, I will also have, uh, I'm going to be showing examples of good sponsored posts, and so it's, obviously you're not going to sit here and read it, <laughs> so I have the links to the actual posts that you can look at too. So, uh, so the, yeah, there's no through line or story, and uh, yeah, you're just like, what, why? Why am I reading this? It's just, okay, clearly this is an app. Um, it's an obvious copy and paste, right? Because and sometimes you can't fault the influencer because sometimes the sponsor will tell you these are the exact words you can use and if you don't use these then I will kick it back to you five million times until like you pass the deadline and now we won't pay you but you still have to post and now you owe us money for it because it kills me and you're like okay. Um, so yeah, it's an obvious copy and paste but sometimes it isn't required by the sponsor to have the same words then it still shows up like that. Uh, and then, what personally I think is the worst thing in a sponsored post is if you neglect to give important information, right? Like, whether the sponsor wants you to give it, which they probably do, or your reader wants to know it, right? Like, if you don't, if it's a, a concert, but you don't tell them what date it is. <laughs> like, well, did this happen in 1992? I don't know. Uh, the pricing. Like, the worst is after you read, like, a thousand word thing, and then they're like, click on it, and you're like, but how much does it cost? And they won't tell you, and then you click on it, and it's like $10 million, and you're like, well, well, no wonder you didn't tell me how much it cost, this is $10 million. Um, some, I've seen it where you forget the brand itself, they don't tell you the actual brand of the company. Uh, the pictures are terrible, so like every sponsor post that I've ever done, my pictures are terrible, but they're paying for my words, that's what I tell myself. <laughs> but that's why I have to like attend this summits like these to like improve my photo game. Uh, or you don't even mention the features, right? It's just not there. So that's, so personally, I think if someone's paying you and you neglect this part, that's the most, like, the rudest thing I think you could do. Um, and, okay, so be honest, have you ever written a sucky sponsor post? I mean, I totally have. If I had to write three, I had to write two posts a week and a newsletter about the same, like, product over 18 months, I guarantee you there are some sucky posts. They're like, oh, but they, they had already paid me. Okay. So, right now I'm going to walk you through a recent sponsor post that I did and kind of tell you my approach. Um, just because it's my approach doesn't mean that's the way you have to do it. Uh, just, just kind of give you an idea of how to do it. Um, my co-speaker who was supposed to be here, Summer, she approaches everything. She, she approaches things from a completely different way than I do. So she always comes with a story, and she doesn't care if the like product doesn't fit into the story. She says she'll figure it out. <laughs> but like whatever she was inspired to write about this about the product, she focuses on the story because she's an amazing writer and she's great at that. Um, I'm a, a pretty good writer, <laughs> but that's not how I approach things. So um, so this this is a sponsored post I did for Mochi Magazine, and it was sponsored by Comcast. So they hired I, I hooked up. Comcast with Mochi, and they wanted us to cover the Miss Chinatown USA pageant. And uh, and it was actually a really, really hard post to write, because one, I don't care about pageants. <laughs> and uh, included in that subset is, I don't care about Miss USA Chinatown pageants. <laughs> right, and I was just like, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I mean, I'll go because like it's like a free ticket. That's kind of cool, right? I've never been to a pageant, so I'll go, and that's exciting. Uh, but I just didn't know what to talk about. I didn't know like how to approach it. Uh, and it was really, really difficult for me. And um, 
And so, so I went, and I was also on a tight deadline, because they're like, okay, we want it out ASAP as possible. And I was like, great! And, I was, and then after I went to the pageant, I mean, it was, it was cool. It reinforced that it was not my thing. <laughs> <laughs> but like, the women were amazing. Like, I could never be them in my like, hottest, youngest, pre-4 baby days. I could have not, I would have never worn a like, bikini and walk and strut on stage and I would not have had that bounce. <laughs> you know? so I was like, you know, you do you, that's awesome. And they were like super smart and talented, but I had no idea how to write this article because all I could think of was like, oh, I'm not a pageant person. And then I had this, like, I was complaining about it to my husband and I was like, ah, you know what? It's so stupid because, you know, Miss Chinatown USA, like, I used to, I grew up in the Bay Area. We, we saw, I heard about this, I knew about it. But, you know, they only had to, they could only, they only did these things because they couldn't win a real pageant. And then he was like, okay, that's cool. Could you not write that? <laughs> <laughs> but then, then I thought, then I stopped and I like, okay, that's my attitude about it. And I bet a lot of people have that same feeling. So I, as I was doing more research into Miss Chinatown, I realized, well, I'm, act I'm actually correct. The reason why Chinese American women had to be in Miss Chinatown USA versus a national pageant is because they could not attend. They could not participate in an actual pageant, like a national pageant, because it was white only. And so that's how I found my angle, right? Like, uh, it took a long time. <laughs> There's a lot of like panic, right? But and so, so that's why that's how I came up with the historical significance of Miss Chinatown. Um, and so, why do I bring that up? It's because you, you, don't, you never know where you're gonna like, approach something. So I, so that was my angle, right? Why is, why is Miss Chinatown important? But, but Miss Chinatown, the pageant, wasn't my client, right? It was Comcast. And so, I remember that I was writing, what does Comcast want people to know from this coverage, right? So that's, what, that's why I try to approach them. Like, what does the, my client want people to know from this. So they sponsored uh, an award. It was their second year doing it. They were very proud of this award, the Community Service Award. Um, and so my job wasn't necessarily to cover the pageant, but it was to make Comcast look good, right? Just shine. And so I interviewed the, one of their judges, was, who was a Comcast employee. She gave like good talking points. And then I also interviewed the winner of the pageant and, the, and that award. And so it, and it, so it became more newsy, um, but Every, mo every time I could put Comcast in there, I put Comcast in there, right? Versus um, if it was just probably up to me and it wasn't about like sponsored posts, I would have written it completely differently. Um, so that's just kind of how I approached it. And then, um, so once I found the angle, everything else came easily. And then the rest was just like technical things of like where to put a quote, where to put information. How do you like present information about this pageant without just I mean, no one's going to the site to read a Wikipedia article, right? Like, they wouldn't have gone to Wikipedia. <laughs> uh, so you just try to, so then I also had to think about who is reading this article. So even though this is for Mochi Magazine, you are writing something probably for yourself when you do sponsored posts, right? So who, who is your audience? What do they expect from you? What do they want from you? What, what kind of information are they going to expect from you? So I also, so I always think about two, two audiences the sponsor and the person actually reading it. So Mochi Magazine, their audience is Asian American women, mostly millennials. And so I am not a millennial. I know I look it. But <laughs> <laughs> yes, the appropriate response is laugh, even if you don't agree. <laughs> so, but, so I adopted a persona because I had no idea how to start this. I was like, so the, we joked around, we joked around at the magazine uh, that we have an Auntie Mochi. And so occasionally I channel Auntie Mochi and she's just like, a lot of cultures have like aunties, you're just the older like big sis, but a little bit older than someone you would call a big sis. <laughs> oh, yes. Right. Yeah. Um, oh, in my 40s, all right. <laughs> so, so yeah, I, I channeled this like auntie mochi persona and it's just a little bit more exaggerated and more like grumpy get off my lawn type of like person. And it's not like a fake person because I am actually a grumpy get off my lawn type of person, but it's, I'm not always like that. My husband might disagree, <laughs> but you know, like, so, so you can approach something from a persona too, and so that can set the tone 
of your article. So those are all the things that I wasn't actively trying to tell myself to do, but those are the things that's kind of my approach to it. And so that, I know that was a lot to throw at you. So this is kind of what I do in essence. So I always think, you know, take it back to elementary school, right? When they teach you how to write an essay or, or something. The, the five, five W's and one H. Who, what, where, why, when, and how. So I approach these, these the who, what, where, why, blah, 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 um, from, again, two approaches. From the sponsor, like who, who is sponsoring, right? That's important because of disclosures, FDC, we love you. <laughs> what is this post going to be about? Is it a product? Is it a service? Like make sure that you cover that, what they want uh, and, and any talking points that they want you to discuss. Where? Like, is it in the US only? Is it in Canada also? Is it Europe? Is it Asia? Is it all over? Is it on the moon? These are important things. Why? Why is it important for the sponsor? Why, why, why does the sponsor find this product or service important? And then when? When is it? Is it, is it evergreen? Is it always? You know, is it, is it a Christmas sale? If you post about it in New Year's, you're late. <laughs> you're not going to get paid. Um, you know, when, when, right? Um, and then how? How can they get this product? How can they use this service? How, do, how, 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 do, how does this company want you to use this thing, right? Because we all know like there's off-label uses <laughs> and there's an official use. So, so how do they, what do they, like how do they want you to talk about this? And then from the audience point of view, from your reader, right? From you, you know your readership. Like my readership is like probably 75 to 80% women, mostly Asian, Asian American, and of that subset, mostly Chinese. Because I talk about teaching my kids, teaching kids Chinese a lot on my personal play, um, and then I guess men care about that too sometimes. <laughs> if they're at all involved in their children's education, uh, so I know that if I'm writing for my site, uh, that, that I tend to reduce it down even further. Like I, I write, I tell myself that my audience is who I was, who I am, and who I'm becoming. So those are the people that I write for. And if that happens to overlap with my actual demographics, that's great. If it doesn't, well, too bad. <laughs> you don't have to like everything I write. And so, so you think about your audience. Who are they? So I told you my audience. You should know your audience. Um, so, and that audience will change if it's for your personal site or for a freelance site. If, if you're writing for mom.com, it's a different audience than Mochi, right? Or, and mom.com is even a different audience than Romper, even though they all cater to moms, right? Uh, so what? What does your audience want to know? What does your reader want to know about this product, right? Like if you were to, like think of yourself when you read a review, what do you want to know about it? You want to know like what it is, what it looks like, how big it is, can it fit in your purse, can you take it with you, does it like beep all the time and then you have to like break it with a hammer because there's no off button. I've actually done that. <laughs> so, you know, like what is it, right? What, 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 do your, what do your audience members want to know? Are there like, is, does it poke you in weird places? Like, I, I don't know what I'm, product I'm describing. <laughs> like, it pokes you. This is very bad this product. Uh, like, where, where can I buy it? Like, I love things. I love to buy things. And uh, I also hate things. It's a love-hate relationship. But, like, if I see something cool, I, like, I saw someone the other day with this, like, awesome um, orange slice purse. I was like, awesome. I was like, where do you get it? She told me. And I was like, awesome. So if you're talking about... So as a reader, if you're interested in that thing, you want to know where you can buy it. Um, and then if you have impulse control problems, you buy it. Um, like, and then why? Why should I care about this product? So I have a book. So you want to teach your kids Chinese. Why should someone buy this book about how to teach their kids Chinese? One, because I'm brilliant and very funny. But two, because they want to learn how to teach their kids Chinese, right? So that's, so you have to give your reader a why. Like, why should they care about this product? Why are you talking about this product to them? Why are you wasting their time? Or, you know, why? Why should they care about this? And then when? Again, because is this something that has already happened? Is this going to happen? Is this happening now? Um, are you, so those are important things. And so often they overlap, right? And then how? How can I buy this? How can I use this? If I, if I trust you, buy this thing or this service, how do I use it? Can I use it off label? Are there other ways to use it? Is it can I only do it? Does it only do one thing? And then now am I stuck with just one thing that does one thing and then I can't do anything else? These are very specific technical writer terms. Okay, things. <laughs> okay, clearly that joke fell really bad. <laughs> All right, so I write the way I talk. 
The way I'm talking right now, this is kind of how I write. It's really, I write with a lot of parentheses because I feel like my best material is in the throwaway jokes. <laughs> <laughs> Where my husband's like, let's just throw away all your jokes. And I'm like, why, why? Um, I try to be myself because uh, I'm sure there's some cliche thing you can say about being yourself, but it's, it's, it's really, it's just actually just easier to be yourself um, than to be something else. Um, it's not that good of an actress. <laughs> so, and then, for me, it's helpful to determine whether it's a review, is it a story, is it a profile about something, or is it an opinion piece. Now, sometimes there's like an overlap between them. I'm not saying you just, well, this is a story, so I can't talk about other things. Um, but, but yeah, it's helpful for me to know what angle I'm trying to approach something from. So uh, with my Moshi Magazine example, like I, had, I couldn't write anything, I was just like, Oh, this is terrible. Like, just sat there. And of course, I, I'm also easily distracted. So YouTube, I, I had to do a lot of research on YouTube. Um, but, you know, to watch music videos, to like get creative leave. But, you know, but like once I found the angle, it was really easy to write. So, so sometimes the process is like procrastinate, procrastinate, procrastinate. <laughs> Crap, there's a deadline. Right, 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 right. And then, okay. <laughs> And then I think about how to weave the product in. Now, if it's a review, it's actually pretty easy, right? The product, you're talking about the product, you're reviewing the product, it has, it has like five slides to it, and like make noises. Um, but if you're talking about a story, like sometimes it's, um, I think someone had mentioned, like sometimes it's like super abrupt, there's like a story. Um, like it's like those recipe posts, right? There's a really long story, and then you're like, I just want to know how many garlic things to put in. Um, and so, I think uh, like two or three years ago, I did a post for Kia. They had lent us a car, my friend and I a car, and we drove from Northern California to Southern California for another conference. And, uh, and the, uh, the expectation being, they lent us this vehicle, you're gonna write about it. <laughs> and so I was like, I don't know crap about cars. Like all I care is that it gets me from point A to point B. My family has only driven Toyota since 1985. I don't, what do you, I don't care about cars. Um, so I didn't, again, I was like, what, what am I going to write about? This will be like the most, first of all, no one has ever, ever come to my site via search going, how to buy a car. Or like, <laughs> does, does Mandra and Mama care about cars? No, she does not. She loves her swagger wagon and it's, it's great. And it smells like meat all the time. <laughs> uh, but like, so, so I didn't know how to do it. But then I decided, oh, you know what? We have to drive up and down the five to get from Bay Area to, uh, to, to LA. And I was like, you know what? I have driven this road for the past 20 years, constantly, because I went to UCLA, and then I was in a long distance relationship, and so I know that road. Like, at any point, I could fall asleep, I wake up, I'll look at the sign, and I know exactly where we are. Like, that's how well I know this ugly, stupid, boring road that smells like cats. So, so yeah, so I told a story about the I-5. And then, you know, oh, we're driving in the Kia. And every now and then you mention, oh, it has a USB thing. It has Bluetooth. All these fancy terms that I don't know what actually means. But they just kind of in, right? And so that's how I chose to weave that product in. But I think my friend actually did a review about the car. Right? So you can, we, so we were in the same vehicle. We just did different things with it, right? Uh, and then I know we said that a sign of a bad post is to copy and paste. But I also copy and paste because it's much easier to edit words than to start on a blank page. Oh, so do you, when you use, I don't know if I can get to that, oh, sure. so I was like chomping at the bit. <laughs> so I, I know what you mean in the sense of like copying these from a template. Is it like you kind of made your own template for like these different kind of scenarios? Yeah. You copy that and then you mm -hmm. just, because that's what I do like with hashtags with like, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. so I don't have to keep writing them all the time. Yes. So you just kind of just do, I mean, to be honest with you, that's what creators do too, like designers. If we are doing something that's repetitive, like we'll kind of make one, use that, and just because I'm not a writer, period. Mm. Like I'm horrible, but I <laughs> details. So it's like it helps me to do like these little things that kind of because everything I would do if I was to write something, I would only do reviews because I felt like that's the only way I could stick mm. to the get it done and you know, especially if they have a word count. Oh yeah, yeah. And so it kind of you already know the word count is already taken care of, mm -hmm. and you can just be like, okay, I got this, now I'm going to add my cute little pictures and cute little Yes, things. yes. So uh, I, I write reviews about, of movies and books, or I used to write book reviews about Chinese books. Oh my god, it just like sucked the life out of me. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
<laughs> I was like, I actually don't care. The reason why I want to teach my children how to read is so I never have to read them a book ever again. <laughs> and then I had four children so that my older children can read to my younger children. <laughs> and also that they can raise my younger children. And they're doing a terrible job. <laughs> so, but yeah, yeah, so that's what I do. So I have a, like a kind of a template. This is, these are the things I hit for like a Chinese book. Uh, and then these are the things I talk about, uh, certain beats. Okay. You know, like in a sitcom, like or like like a show, like NCIS. You know for sure within the first five minutes, I'm going to show you this person getting murdered. And even though my child has watched it for ten years with me, still doesn't understand the concept. And he'll be like, "What happened to him? Why did they do that? Why did they die? Who are they?" I was like, "You've seen the show for ten years. We know this is the whole, the whole premise of the show is to find out who did this, why did they die, and well, who are they?" And he's like, okay, every every week without fail. And so same thing. You can do that. You can copy paste NCIS same episode for the last 18 years, mm -hmm. right? Just different things. So if it's, a, it, it's especially handy if it's like a review, like a product review, right? Um, because you can say, oh, this is the product, this is the specs, this is the, and then you just fill it out. Um, and just be careful when you copy and paste that you actually remember to change the things you're copying and pasting. Okay, just be careful. Um, and then also, I've actually used it for longer pieces, um, like, uh, so when I wrote the review of the pageant, um, I, covering events is actually very difficult for me because I feel like I have to be very journalistic sounding and I'm not a journalistic sounding person. <laughs> so, so I feel like I'm very serious and I'm not a very serious person. Um, so what I did was I copied and pasted, or actually just referenced another event that I had covered. And I was like, okay, I'm gonna copy this style. And that's when I said, okay, I'll, I'll come in from the Auntie Mochi ankle because at that time again I was like I don't know what to do I'm surrounded by like these young Instagrammers and they're like why is this old lady in the section with us <laughs> they like they literally looked at me like why are you here like they were trying to figure out like is she a mom of a celebrity like who why but so yeah so that's so that's what I mean by copy and paste um, and then write and pitch what you know so not not every spot ideally in this ideal world sponsors are like banging down your door and like please write for us please feature us on your site, but usually it's like, not that way. <laughs> that has not been my personal experience. So, so write and pitch what you know. And uh, what I know is BTS. <laughs> and I've actually written and pitched a lot of pieces about BTS to, and sometimes with a product in mind, but, um, but I've written, you know, you can use this type of same skill, of just write and pitch what you know. And I've gotten hired to write about a hot, Asian And I'm like, that's a good, that's a good life, I feel like. Um, so, we're gonna look at some examples of awesome posts. And, and uh, again, all of these posts are, will be on um, this link page thing that I've set up for you, where you can look at my slides, and then also see the articles that I'm referencing. So the first one is from Summerland Davis, who, who couldn't be with us today. And she writes at the Dirty Floor Diaries. Now, Summer is an Iris Award-winning writer. She's amazing. She's, what she excels at is uh, telling a story that just breaks your heart, right? She's like, reaches on your throat, grabs out all your viscera, and then you're a mess on the floor, and you thank her for it, because it's so good, okay? So, like I mentioned earlier, she approaches most, the majority of her sponsor posts from a story point of view. So this post was about, it was sponsored by MedIQ, and it was about battling depression in college. So she opens with like, you know, how she, she, her, uh, she has a distinct memory of being three years old, just walking down the hospital, and she's sitting between her parents, and all she remembers is that she has never not felt anxious. She's always felt anxious. And then she tells all these stories, like every picture that you see me post, you don't know how much anxiety I was suffering during this. And then she talks about how she sees these same symptoms in her kids, and how she's just sent her kid off, her oldest son, to college and how important, how, she, how worried she is about it, how important mental health is to her for, about it, and how like it's shaped her whole life, like anxiety has like shaped her whole life. Um, and so you see like the pictures she includes, they all seem fun, they don't seem like they would fit this narrative of mental health, but she's trying to tell us like, okay, even her pictures have a point, right? Her pictures are saying like, this looks like I'm fine, but actually I'm dying of anxiety, right? And so she tells you all these stories, and then she talks about and then she talked about mid IQ, right? She talked about this. This is what this is what actually they wanted, right? This like four sentences, 
but she has all this other story around it, right? And and it was amazing. Like it's just like you're like this is this is not a survey, <laughs> but that's not what you get, right? But that's that's why she got paid to do it, right? Um, and so so she's really good at that. And then she I think she was either an ambassador or something, but like it was a series of posts for MedIQ about anxiety, and she just it was like every piece was just amazing. Um, Brandy Riley, she's a business coach. She is, I'm in her mastermind called Courage to Earn More. She's amazing. And she also writes that Mama Knows It All. So this post, she was doing to talk about um, hypoactive sexual desire. Uh, so like just low libido. And as you can see, you know, you, she has this like great headline. You can love your husband and still have intimacy issues. And you're, not, you're still not sure is it like, is it like your physical intimacy, emotional intimacy, all sorts of intimacy. And then she goes on, she talks about like, Low sex drive, you know, her husband saying like, hey, you should go see a doctor, or something like saying, oh, she was worried about all these reasons. And it's like super vulnerable. I would, I talk about sex a lot because I'm a thirsty ho, but like, <laughs> <laughs> but I never, ever talk about sex with my husband. Not because we don't have it, we have four children, we know how to do it. But, <laughs> but I don't talk about it because I, uh, because his friends read my stuff. And I don't want his his friends to be like, oh, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> you know, yeah. I don't want to do this I don't know. I don't hang out with men. Um, but like, I but personally, that's a boundary of mine, right? So when I see someone talk about sex with their husband or lack thereof, and like the medical things about it, I I'm just like, wow, I can't. That's amazing because I would never do that. Um, and and that and I'm a total oversharer, as we have seen. <laughs> but uh, that's that's where I draw my personal boundaries. So. So you can see, like, and she, and it's for right to desire, okay? But she has the whole story, and she talks about all the symptoms. Like, it could have been, like, a medical article, right? It could have been really boring, you know? But this is it's compelling, it's fascinating, it, it, you know, it's something that a lot of women struggle with, but we don't talk about because we're afraid, like, oh, you're just, you're just rigid, you're just a horrible person, whatever. Another example is Amira Martin. She is, she does four hats on frugal, and she has three kids. And she does like frugal living. And so the two examples I gave you before, I'm like, oh my God, maybe you're thinking like, you can only tell heartbreaking stories. And you're like, well, what if I don't have a heartbreaking story? What if I'm just fucking awesome and my whole life has been great and it's hilarious? What then? What can I do? Well, you don't have to like only pull on people's heartstrings, right? Like you could just be funny. You can just be really, really funny. And Amira is really, really funny. And so this is, she, she loves, if you know her, she's like obsessed with all the, like she had those like weekly videos of like how she only spent sixty eight dollars for her family of five at Aldi and it covers all their food and I was like, dude, that's like I don't I don't understand that. <laughs> I got a Costco, it's like two hundred dollars every trip, and, I, and I, my husband was like, did you buy food? And I was like, maybe. maybe? <laughs> uh, so yeah, this Aldi sweatshirt dress is a problem, and you're like, well, why is it a problem? Is it is it is it slutty? If so, I want it. And like, what what why? And then you know she talks about like. The Isle of Shame, I don't even know what that means, but I, I kind of like dig it, right? And then like, she tells you how much it is, she has pictures of what it is. Um, if you go on, she, she tells you like what size it is, how, how you can dress like, if you have a daughter, if she's a tween, how you can wear it, different weather you can wear it in, like all this information about a $12.99 sweater dress thing. You know, she includes like, like a fun pig, all these things, right? And, and I guess, I'm not actually sure if it's actually sponsored, but you could do that with a sponsored post. Right? Like it doesn't all have to be like, it, and this is actually a very short post. I think it was maybe like 500 words or so. Um, and, but it was short. I know everything that I've never wanted to know about a dress. And it was fun. And I know that comes in like multiple colors and, and that I should probably not be in them small. <laughs> That's what I mean, right? Uh, and then Liz Porter, uh, she's one of my dearest friends. This is, um, this was not, again, a, specifically a sponsored post but it's an affiliate post. So the same things that you do for like sponsor posts, you can do for affiliates, right? So that's why I say like, in my mind, a sponsor post is where you get paid. And if you can get paid off affiliate stuff, then I, you can kind of put in, it's the same rules apply. And so she, the, uh, I don't know if you guys know what a glowforge is, but it's basically like a giant laser. Yeah, for stuff, and she like lasers things. She makes the most awesome jewelry. Uh, and so she has a post, and it's one of her top performing posts, and she makes a lot of money from it. Uh, you can afford a Glowforge. And what's she talking about? Glowforge is very expensive. It's like several thousand dollars. 
and not everyone has that in their pocket to like spend. So she talks about it. She addresses it like, you know, she talks about how great it is, her setup, you know, what the things that she's made. She's made. She started a business last year, beginning of last year. She got to go forward and was in the black at the end of the year, making products and selling those products. Right. So she talks about it. She talks about the models because if you're if you're if you landed on her site for Glowforge, you want to know about the different models. You want to know how much it costs. You want to know how long has she had it. When did it take? How long? Like the kind of things that she can make, the type of money she can make, uh, and then she even tells like, okay, she she's very honest. Like, you know, she sold the product. She, she it'll be paid off in two months. Like she gives good details, information. Like, where can you buy? This is expensive. How can we address how expensive it is? How can we make it easier for you to buy? How can we? And then she's like, and I have a coupon for X amount of off. And then, and then she has her disclosures. If you use my coupon, you get blah blah blah, and I get blah blah blah. And then, and it's all very natural because we're everyone's intimidated by like FTC disclosures, right? And you think you have to say things like, this post was sponsored by blah blah blah. And you have all these legal leads, but really, it can just be like, hey, this is an affiliate link. If you buy it, you get X amount off. I get. And, and, and that's your disclosure, that's, and that's okay. Uh, so, you don't have to have that on the top two? You, um, as long as it's disclosed, I think from what I recall, the rule actually is as long as you disclose prior to giving a link, it doesn't matter how you do it. So I'm lazy, I'm really lazy, and I, because I meander in my articles, I just have a like blanket, this post may contain affiliate links. Or this post was sponsored by so and so, blah blah blah. And and yes, sometimes I'll address it in the actual thing. Sometimes I'll say, hey, yeah, they're paying me, but they only pay me after I have bought all their products and I've used it with three of my children. And then I pitched them an idea of using it on my other kid, you know, and that's why they they said yes, right? And so that I've said it in natural language like that, but I also because I don't always remember to do that, I just have a default. Hey, this post is sponsored by so and so. All opinions are my own because no one, no one would actually write this on a corporate site because <laughs> they, they want to keep their job. All right, so common themes of all these awesome posts they made their reader feel something, right? Whether it was like feeling lot, not alone, right? Like, oh, I'm not the only person with a low sex drive, or oh, I'm not the only person who struggles with mental health, um, or they felt something like, you know. You're, like summer, it's great at making you feel something like, like oh, oh my gosh, like my heart hurts, or my, in, in like a good way, right? Uh, or you, you made, they made you laugh, right? Like Amira's post was really, really funny. Or they made you feel like, oh, maybe I can afford this. I, you can feel hope, I, I can afford this. I've always wanted it, maybe I can do it. And they conveyed like key points, they didn't sound like an ad, they solved a problem for you, and they gave good advice and information, and it was compelling. So, what, wait, what? No, sorry. Oh, okay, sorry. Um, what's stopping you from writing an awesome post? So, an awesome sponsor post. So, so what, what kind of blocks you when you're like, when you're given a sponsor post? What, what makes you go, ah! Well, I can tell you, so I work with a supplement company, and so um, FDA, like, right. language on what you can use is very, very particular. So sometimes I find that to be a big challenge because, like, like I just did a post about elder, like making homemade elder. I can't say anything like related to like immune health. So it's like really hard to convey the message uh -huh. without being able to say that. So yeah. like that's a big okay. challenge for me. Okay. Other folks? I already have Yeah, like a writer's block. Like okay. you see, at least for me, you see sponsor posts and like, oh, this is gonna be great, and then you sit down and write it and it's like, what do I write? Like it's a cool product, but what do I write? You're like, it's pink. challenges that you kind of hit? All right, so for me, I used to have all these like myths about sponsor posts that I believe. And, and to a certain extent, I think I, I still come against it sometimes when I'm writing, which is that it has to sound like a press release. Like, I feel like sometimes I think that if I'm writing a sponsor post, some of the company's paying me money and I'm just, but they don't know that I'm just like some lady who permanently lives in sweatpants. Like, that I'm like, oh, I have to sound a lot more like official or like, smart sounding or like press releasey. But the thing is this, if they wanted a press release, they would have hired a publicist, right? And they probably have hired a publicist. So you're a different part of their campaign, right? You're 
They hired you for your voice, for your point of view. So, so you don't have to worry about that. Or that has to be serious. Like you have to, like you have to sound corporate or something like that. And you know, and then like stripped of personality is just this like blank thing. And again, if they wanted to do that, there's plenty of people that they can hire and pay agencies to do that for, right? Or or this is my favorite. Sometimes you feel like you've sold out. But you know what? Rent, mortgages, bills, <laughs> like those are important things, right? And like and I feel like the reason why people feel um, that like say like an influencer is sold out is because of the reasons that we had originally listed about what makes a sponsored post suck. Okay. Now I'm not saying that when Best Buy is telling you to like post a thing and you have to make that like a brilliant storytelling just so you get your like fifteen dollar Best Buy gift card, you don't have to do that. That's okay, right? Like I'm not saying you have to do that. But like the reason why people feel like you've sold out is because whatever you're like um, talking about doesn't fit your message. It's somehow like inco. It's it's a, there's dissonance between who you've presented as yourself um, to your readers or to other people, and um, and then like what you're actually like talking about, right? So if I have never talked about boy bands or like being thirsty or period men half my age, like and then all of a sudden like I put BTS things in my like. Um, presentation and then like start doing YouTube reactions to that. Not that I've done this, I have. <laughs> but like then it'd be like, what is she just trying to capitalize on BTS? Has she sold out? Is she like she like what happened? Because I if I've never talked about it ever, then it, it's weird, right? Like if, if if I've never talked about essential oils or like, you know, health supplements and all of a sudden I'm talking about elderberry, people are like, what is it? What? you talk about Chinese, what are you doing? Like, clearly this is a money grab. And I have nothing against money grants. You know, get that money, get paid, okay? Uh, but it's it's hard for people to follow, right? And so because I talk about, I, I sneak BTS in like almost every single post I've ever written ever in the last two years. It's difficult, but I've met the challenge. <laughs> yes. So in terms of like the selling out piece, do you recommend, I guess in terms of the voice, that it's the same across like all your platforms? And I say that because like with TikTok, so uh -huh. I feel like, so many people are being silly and dancing, and that is not, you know, what people know of their brand and right. all of that. And they're trying to like merge the two, and they kind of really cool. You know, I have several thoughts about it, but like, for instance, you have layers, right? You don't show the same face to your husband as you do to your kids all the time, <laughs> right? Unless your husband's into that, right? Like, but like, and we don't shame. Right? As long as everything's consensual, good. Enthusiastic. So 
I just want to know what to, like, how do I even get to a point where I can start? Okay. Who's going to post? Who's going to post? I used to blog a long time ago, so I stopped doing that. But, you know, I have an Instagram account. So people. practice. Practice. Yeah. Practice doing it. Practice as if you use stuff all the time, right? Mm -hmm. So I didn't get that big 18-month-long um, sponsorship thing um, out of the blue. It's because I wasn't getting paid to review Chinese books. <laughs> I paid to review those Chinese books. I paid all the money for these stupid books that I would never read ever. Uh, but you know, but people want to know about it, and so they saw me do that. I, I, I wrote about this company several times prior. I sent them a lot of clients, right? Because they can see who's sending what, right? And so that's how I got the gig. I'm not, I'm not saying that just if you want to work with like Honda and you only post about Honda and you like that they will guarantee to like hire you, but at least give people something that they can see, that they say, oh, this is her style, this is how she would cover something. And your readers don't know it's not sponsored, right? Now, who actually reads disclaimers? I think we only read disclaimers because we want to see it like some influencers trying to get out of something, right? <laughs> no one really cares, right? Uh, and then we also feel like you can't tell a compelling story or that you have to use the product in a conventional way. So like, let's say you're selling, let's say your sponsor is a toilet paper company. The conventional way is talking about like, oh, this toilet paper is really thick. It doesn't leave bits and pieces in your bits and pieces. Like, like, <laughs> like it doesn't clog your toilet. Like all these, but and that's, I'm not saying you can't do that. That's a perfectly legit way to talk about toilet paper, right? But you could also say like, hey, this toilet paper is extra strong and comes in huge rolls so that when you TP your neighbor's house that you hate, like when their sprinklers come on, it doesn't dissolve. <laughs> right? right? Or that you only have to buy five rolls instead of 20 because they're extra mega rolls and they go really high and then they don't break because they're very solid. But right, whatever, right? You can do, you can, you don't have to do it the way you think normally it has to be done. So tips for getting unstuck. Uh, what I do is I record myself talking. So like, because talking is much faster, right? You're not thinking like you have to edit. Um, and that's why people don't like extemporaneous conversations sometimes, because you can't edit. <laughs> right? So you just talk, record into your phone. It doesn't have to be any more complicated than that. Right? Uh, change your approach. So when I was trying to review the event as a, like a, like a journalist, like, oh, this is what happened. It was really, really hard. But once I changed it to like, hey, I'm an old lady. I don't understand this thing. And oh, whoops, I was wrong because of racism. <laughs> right? that's, the, that's the article in a nutshell. Um, so you can change the approach. You can pretend you're explaining a concept or a thing or what that, this product or service is to like a friend, your spouse, your kid, um, and then you'll, you'll naturally, and then record yourself doing it. You know? Or you can just pretend you're doing that. You can adopt a persona. So I have several personas. Um, I mean, they're all, again, consi consistent with who you are. Don't like make up someone who's not you at all, right? Because <laughs> people will see that. But this is, this is just a hyped up version of who I am normally. Right? Like I, well, like, Maybe tone down because I'm actually more crass. But, <laughs> but you know, like the Auntie Mochi, I am a grumpy person. You know, I really do not understand a lot of things on the internet. <laughs> you know, like, okay. So I play those things up. So you can play up a persona. Uh, like, or I play up like the exasperated stay at home, bilingual, homeschooling mom at four. Because um, who wouldn't be exasperated? You can, again, copy and paste from a template, right? Because you can say, oh, this is what I wrote before. Maybe. Like, the thesaurus is great. It's all mine. <laughs> like, it doesn't have to just be, I love it. it you can use words like, I enjoyed it. <laughs> I liked it a decent amount, you know. Set a 15-minute timer. Say, I'm only going to spend 15 minutes on it. And then what will happen is, usually, you start writing and you just work on it. It doesn't matter. Just say, I have 15 minutes. I need to get 100 words on the page. And you just write. And what will happen is, once you don't care about what it sounds like, you'll write and you'll have, like, a throat clearing 100 for me, it's like the whole thing is a throat clearing. Um, <laughs> but then, and then, and then you, you either keep going and set another timer, or you do, you've gotten enough going that you can you don't need any more like gimmicks. And then take a break, unless if the whole entire time up until now you've been taking a break, <laughs> which is kind of how I prepare for writing. Um, but sometimes you might either need to take a break, read something completely different, or you know you've been staring at it too long, or you know just get up and move around. So this approach will work for really any type of medium, whether it's, um, you know, you're writing an Instagram. I, I don't know why it's so hard for me to write an Instagram caption. It's like, I just, and it's editable, so I don't know what my, what my problem is. <laughs> but 
but it, it's really hard for me, so in my brain, so what I try to do is I try to apply those things like, oh, don't worry about it, no one's all, actually, I don't actually have that many Instagram followers, so it's okay. No one will see it anyway, so that, that will, that'll free me up. But, but you should follow me. <laughs> so any questions and answer, questions or whatever? Okay. Do you have any tips for keeping it super short? Writing short is much harder than writing long. So the tip for that is to write long and then cut. I thought that was like the biggest thing I've ever said. <laughs> so tell us more about the template and I guess how to go about like developing it and using it. And okay. Know. So there's several ways. Uh, you either have written similar posts in the past and you can just kind of copy and paste that structure. Um, you can always go to someone else's site and see how they organize it. Uh, so the benefits of going to other people's sites is that you can see different ways people present information. Uh, the con is that you get overwhelmed with all these different ways that people can present information. And then you're like, ah! Uh, and so sometimes I'll only spend a certain amount of time, but then not worry about copying it exactly. Um, and then, I mean, that's pretty much it. That's what I mean by like copy and paste. Okay. And then after you've, like you've done a lot of posts, so you, you know which ones are easy to write. And so you can just copy and paste those and then just write over it. If that makes sense. Does, Is there like a rule about um, like how much you know to expect with you know getting paid? So um, is it kind of like a known scale? Yes and no. I would say that if you're starting out, you would probably go the agency route because they don't you know, they're the ones like making the relationships and stuff. Um, but you can always reach out. I think it depends on. Uh, who the sponsor is, who it's through. If you're doing it through an agency, it will always be less money than if you got the contact yourself, which makes sense, right? You're pay for like a middleman. But then you probably wouldn't have been able to form that relationship were it not for the middleman, right? So um, I think it just depends on uh, your, s it depends on a lot of things, right? Like your size, your following, your ability, and how much you think you deserve, right? Because you could be, you could have like 100,000 people followers, but you don't that great, and so then they charge like fifteen dollars for a post, right? So I think I, I can't really tell you uh, what because I I don't know. <laughs> that's that's honest. Yeah. I appreciate that. How many sponsored deals are you approached for versus how many sponsored deals do you pitch? Would you say like it's a 50 like Oh, I'm definitely okay. So keep in mind, I am a very, in a very specific niche. All right. Um, so I get pitched Mandarin products. Um, and, and usually it's because they're smaller companies and they want to, they want me to just do it for a product, which I would have done and I used to do, but now, now I don't because unless if it's like a, for, like a favor of a friend or something like that, and now I don't because one, I hate doing those types of things yeah. and, and, uh, so it's, so something that should take me like an hour to do, it takes me like 10 hours to do because I'm just like, oh, this sucks. And then when you, you know, I just write my feet and then, um, but the things that I have found interesting, I will pitch back sometimes. I'll say like, hey, you know, what? This, I'll just assume that they wanted to pay me. <laughs> uh, these are my rates. The other question I have is, how do you go about reporting your analytics after, like, do you do that as kind of a service for the people who are asking for sponsored posts? Do you give them like, I don't a because I'm very lazy. <laughs> <laughs> and, also, and no one's ever asked, but you should. I feel like yeah. that's a good process, but that's good standards and practices. Um, I, I don't, but you can just look on Google and I try to, yeah, I don't. And then also if you go through an agency, they can also see it, I think, and they ask for certain metrics. But for, for me, I just, I tell people it's the content I'm creating for you. I'm not responsible for, uh, obviously I'm gonna promote it because I'm a narcissist. But, um, but you know, I'll, I think it's good for my site too, right? And that's why I accepted this thing. But um, I can't guarantee any, I think one person had wanted to like guarantee certain sales, I was like, that's not how it works. You know, go ahead. Um, like Rafi and I, we hire a lot of influencers and we do a lot with like influencer marketing and we ask them not to include the price of the product okay. because it is pretty expensive. Like we sell children's dresses for over a hundred dollars, sometimes two hundred. So do you suggest changing that? Because I know that you were saying in, in the beginning that you do like to hear the price even if it is. I mean, I can't tell you how to change your company policy. <laughs> 
<laughs> but I would say that as a consumer, as a, as a yeah. consumer, I hate not knowing the price. Yeah. Especially because, but it depends, right? It depends on what influencer you use and how they set it up. If they like make it look like it's from Kmart, then you're gonna have a problem when I click on the thing and I'm like, yeah. oh, shot. But if it look, clearly looks like it's from like there's those expensive photo shoot and like some serious money was bowed into these things that they've done yeah. and they've set it up as a luxury brand, then I'm I'm already like mentally prepared. Like, fine, if you haven't shown me the price tag, it must be high. Mm -hmm. And if I'm gonna click on it, I know. I'm already prepared for it, right? So I think it depends, right? It depends on who's setting it up, who's the framing. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Do you have the link? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. So here's the. Oh, I saw. You didn't yeah. show pictures of your. They want the link. They want the link. Okay. So I was going to end on. Um, so it's mandarinmama.com slash alt2020. It is 2020, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so really worried all of a sudden. It wasn't. That's what we're doing. We can handle the actual. So when all else fails, insert a picture of that. <laughs>